G'day folks, Ben from Snowies here today with the Austin Foxwing 270 awning and I'm gonna show you how to mount it to your roof rack. Get it. So I'm here today with the Austin Foxwing 270 degree awning behind me here. I'm gonna show you today how it attaches to do the two different types of roof racks. I've got with me some traditional just roof bars here with a channel that it can attach to. And on the Nissan behind me here, I've got a flat bed roof rack, which has got channels for M8 nuts. So we need to improvise a bit to get it attached to one of those. First of all, I'll show you what comes with your kit when you buy your awning. So in front of me here is what's included with your Foxwing 270 awning kit. You've got your user's manual. This is what they call their spar hinge, which is a replacement hinge for the actual awning, should anything break. Now you get various nuts and bolts. These square ones are what go into the, the back panel of the actual uh, awning and then attached to our bracket. There's four of those. Now you get two of two different types of um, bolts to attach it to different roof bars. Now, this smaller one here is designed for um, like your roller racks or your sports bars or aero bars. And then you get a heavy duty one here, which is designed more for this type of roof rack that I've got on my right hand side here. Now, these brackets go through the bottom of these, uh, sorry, these bolts go through the bottom of these brackets here to attach it to the top of our roof bar. Now we may need, you may need to improvise depending on what your setup is. So this one, for example, the plastic um, washer that they supply with this doesn't suit these roof bars. So we can attach this bolt to the bottom of our bracket here and then that slides in the channel of the roof bar here and this can then be tightened up. Put two of them in place. This other one can go on the other roof bar if it was on top of our car. And then this then creates a surface to attach our awning to. Now this makes for a really easy setup if you've got this type of roof bar because there's two brackets attached to awning on the outside and you're good to go. But it is limited if you've got a flatbed roof rack like the car behind me here and we're going to have to improvise a little with some different brackets to make it fit on there. So come up to the roof rack up here and I'll show you why. So this is the flatbed roof rack I've got on my car here. Now these are um, channels for M8 nuts to go into. You put them in this slot here and the M8 nut sits upright so you can attach accessories on top of the um, roof rack like this. There's a channel in the top and the bottom. Now this limits the use of these brackets for me because if I was to attach this with M8 nuts in here, it sits below this lip here and I actually need the full width of this bracket to attach the awning against. So that's not gonna work unless I use the space that'll lift it up to there. I don't really have an option to attach it on the side here because I don't have any L brackets or anything to come out. So I've had to improvise and use something different as you probably will if you've got um, a flatbed roof rack like this, whether that be with U-bolts or um, whatever you need to use to, um, to attach it, but you're probably gonna need something that doesn't come with the awning. So I've got myself some steel brackets here. Originally with the idea to put it here, but these holes don't actually line up with the awning. So as an alternative, I'm going to, for now, mount it this way with them eight nuts through the top here and the awning can sit up high above the roof rack here. I'm gonna put two in place because the roof rack weighs about 18 kilos. It's two and a half meters long, so we need at least two of them with about 800 millimeters between each one. First thing I need to do though is attach this bracket to the awning or two brackets to the awning. So we'll hop back down and do that. So I've got the awning flipped over in front of me here. So what we're looking at is the backing panel that's going to attach to our brackets. Um, now the bottom side is where the zipper is, which is facing me at the moment. So the brackets need to go on this way. And just for interest sake, these channels are about 10 centimeters from center to center. So if you're trying to work out where these holes line up or where you need to drill new holes, about 10 centimeters. The first thing we need to do is put these four um, bolts that came with your awning into these channels. They've got a square end on them and to put them in place, we come up to the end here, we pull the cover back a little bit and we can access the end of the channel where these will slide in place. While you're doing this, make sure you don't let go of the bolt because it falls into this end bit here and it's hard to get out. So we'll slide two of each of these bolts at each end. Now I could even use more if I liked because these brackets have actually got to space for two so i could use four bolts to put them on if i like but i'm just going to use two in this case now i can put the bracket on the back here just think about the orientation of this um, i want the awning facing this way off the short side of my bracket so i'm going to put it on this way undo these um, bolts here i'm actually going to put an extra washer on here as well a flat washer and a spring washer just to make sure it's all secure we'll pop our bracket over the top here put our two washers on and we can do this up now we're not going to do this up tightly just yet we'll just um, leave it loose um, we can line it all up after we've got it up on the roof rack. 
Now I'm just going to take note of roughly how far apart these brackets are and line them up about, I'm going to go with about a metre. Um, I'll tend to say about 80 centimetres is the minimum gap you want between these. Um, I'm going to go about a metre because I've got a full length roof rack. Next thing I'm going to do is put the, the nuts in place and the channels on my roof rack so I can lift this up, put it on top and tighten everything into place. So that's the awning in place. I've just got all the nuts done up and finger tied at the moment. I probably mentioned at the moment that it's always a good idea to use some lock nuts on all of these. I've only got normal nuts on these right now, but I should replace them for lock nuts so they don't vibrate loose. I'm pretty happy with where that's aligned at the moment. It's in the center of my roof rack and it just overlaps the back of my car here a little bit. We don't want it sticking out the back too much. I may find I want to adjust it after I've used it a few times, depending on where I want the shelter after it's set up. But I'm going to leave it like that for now. I'll grab my spanner, go around, tighten it all up, and we're done. That's how I've managed to install the Austin Foxwing 270 awning on my car. Now I've installed the passenger side awning here. There is a driver's side awning as well. Um, and you may find you need to customize or improvise for your setup, depending on what type of roof rack you've got or what you've got available to mount it on, because it comes only with that one type of bracket. You can grab these online at lowest prices every day from snowies.com.au. I hope that was useful and helps you install your Oztent Foxwing 270 awning. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, before you go, if you thought that was useful, why not subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of the latest how-to information. Alternatively, give us a like. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comments below or check out our other how-to videos down here.